Hey animators, I just woke up to a new My Animator update. It's the update 1.2.5 and nobody expected it. Let me say it's gonna update the model bench first, so this is like a good morning surprise. Now I'm pretty sure most of you came for the update, so let's skip the intro, but if you like the update videos, hit the bell, because I make them as the updates come out. Now let's see what we're in for. Here's the newest version, I already changed my color palette, this is not the default look, don't worry. But let's get to some changes. It's mainly focused on the camera once again, and right off the bat you can see a couple of new sliders here. We all know the field of view, let's crank up the blades, nothing happens. Let's turn on the high quality render. Still, nothing happens. Because the blades and the blade angle affect depth of field and blooms. We gotta turn those on first. Now, if I crank up the blades, you can see something definitely changing. I don't know exactly what it is, but you can definitely see something is going on. And if you mess with the blades angle, you can see those little patterns rotate in the middle. I'm not entirely sure what it does. It definitely makes a change. But my guess is blades toggle between different types of bloom and depth of field. And the blades angle just rotates the color palette. That's my guess. I'm not sure. I'm not a code master, but you can definitely see some of that action going on in there. So if you remember in the previous update video, I was talking about chromatic aberration and how it works. And the red and blue lights kind of offset a bit. Well, now it's a feature in Mind Meter. Whereas fringe before only affects the blurred areas and offsets the values, chromatic aberration now actually works as the real life thing. See, the values are not offset on a plane, they're offset in space. And that's how chromatic aberration actually works. You can crank up the blur amount, and now you can move red, green, and blue spaces individually. That is visually closer to what chromatic aberration actually it looks like. So we have both the fringe and chromatic aberration have more control as before. I see Nimi took my words into account. Thanks bud. We also have the distort RGB channels. It's basically just that. It distorts the red, green, and blue values. You can crank all of them up to be in the same value. You basically just get an outline blur distortion. If you put the blur down, you get a regular image. Which is actually the same as the distort thing. You see how this looks like? Chromatic aberration? Absolutely the same. I'll get the distort later. Let's crank up the blur and let's say you want a red outline. You can put the red offset down. This can make some really cool video effects. Like, if you've seen the Lord of the Rings, like the vision from the Eye of Mortar, this is what I'm picturing right now. Let's say you want to have it orange, so let's crank up the green down a bit. Let's say I want magenta, bring down red, bring down blue, you have yourself magenta. But that's editive color mixture, you don't need to know about that, that's some next level stuff. However, let's take a look at the distort, and it's basically a distortion of your image. Click the repeat image, which can make some trippy effects, or spider vision, because spiders have multiple eyes. So yeah, those are some new features you can play around with the camera. Let's also look at some other changes. The quality of depth of field has been improved. Bring this up again. So the quality and way this has been has been improved and I'm pretty sure he also did something to tweak the transitions. This looks way more natural than it did before. Oh yeah, it says improved near blur of depth of field effect. It overall looks better now. Anamorphic ratio for depth of field can no longer be negative. Instead, rotating blades is desirable because he had the same effect. I can see people have used this feature already. Here's something that's gonna help a lot of people. So let's add the background tab, make a keyframe here, and I'll change the ground value. The ground block is now animatable, so you can animate the ground changing during your animation. That is a pretty cool feature. So this window's height has been changed, taller than it was before, so it can fit all the text and everything in it. It's a small tweak. From now on, you can add wind effects to certain blocks, such as, for example, fire. Where is it? Increase the wind strength. You can see the fire is affected by wind. This is also the case for campfires, as the fire in the campfire now moves, and the sweet berry bushes. That works for all four stages of the growth. If you had endstone brick slabs in your world and try to import the world, it didn't import them before, now it does that. It also says updated pillager arm texture, and that is funny because that used to be the case with Minecraft as well. So if I bring up his right arm, you can see the texture now looks okay. This was an issue in Minecraft as well. One of the developers switched the two textures, so the faces of the two textures were switched, which made it look a bit funky, and Minecraft fixed that as well. So my mirror is now adjusting to Minecraft. And there's also a couple of bug fixes. If you take on follow the camera, there used to be a delay in the shadows, I guess. These shadows down at the bottom, that used to be delayed, I guess. But now the delay is gone. And also, you can give surfaces textures of the camera now. But if I delete this camera and the surface still had the texture, if you import the surface in, you would crash. Or at least that's what I'm getting from this page. Apparently, these crashes have now been fixed. So that's all that's new in the new updates. I can see potential uses for all of these. I hope you guys do too. Now enjoy the new software and good luck animating. They shot.